Hey, good morning. I'm Linda Dirks. I'm the secretary for the Caliente Emergency Response Team, also known as CERT. And with me today, I have some other members of the board of directors. I have our, our, our treasurer, Jim Ekman. Hi, Jim. And our vice president, Dennis London. Howdy. And we're here today to tell everyone about the CERT program. And I'm going to start first with Jim. Jim, you want to tell us a little bit about the history of CERT here at Caliente Springs? Okay, well, it started more than 10 years ago, because that's as far back as I go. And uh, it was a very complicated, complex system that was originally set up to follow the FEMA guidelines on what CERT should do. And it's been gradually modified to reduce that level of complexity and make it a lot easier for those of us who are in the resort here to enjoy the resort to be able to do what it is. And the whole idea behind CERT is to do three things, basically help yourself, help your family, and then help everybody else in the park. And so, you know, it was designed with a lot of rules and a lot of procedures, and those have pretty much gone away. And it's now still designed to do those three things. It's just not as process driven uh, it's more results driven. Exactly. So it's it's simple but more effective. It's simple, it's easy to follow, uh, and you don't need to be an expert in order to do it. You just need to be able to, to read a list of several things to do and have a general idea of what how you can be helpful. Perfect, Jim. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. And hey, Dennis. Yes. You're an expert on our supplies and our locations and all of the things behind the behind the scenes that happen for CERT. You want to give us a little bit of a rundown? Well, I, I think first off it needs to be acknowledged that uh, we have a, quite a bit of supplies and equipment. Most of that has been funded by volunteer activities in the park, including a recycling program that's uh, it's done by the CERT members and uh, other volunteers. But uh, when you as an expert, maybe I'm not, but uh, and we have stored in a location that all the CERT members are aware of, uh, two generators that run on propane, necessary tanks uh, to support that, propane tanks, and those are used in an emergency situation where we need power, need lighting. Uh, we also have uh, stretchers, medical supplies, uh, we have all kinds of tools, uh, like in the case of uh, rescue and fire, we have people that can go out and uh, have the equipment necessary to jack up the side of a building. <laughs> well, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. Yeah. Say a wall yeah. and rescue somebody. Uh, we've also got all kinds of personal protection equipment up there. We have lights. Uh, we have also, we have the, the mask, like most of us are wearing during the pandemic, but the regular uh, in 95, in fact, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, CERT, uh, the president of CERT, made it a point to send out a message to everybody here in this park that if they needed a, a mask, that it would be provided, and he delivered, I, I don't know how many numbers of them to residents in the park, but everybody that requested them got them. And uh, it's kind of, uh, kind of nice to be able to do that. That's part of what we're about here in case of an emergency. And, in reality, the pandemic created an emergency yeah. and those were distributed through the park. That's fabulous that we were prepared and, and we were able to step in and do that when, when the pandemic first hit and being prepared. And we have some locations around the resort. You want to talk about our locations? Or not specifically, but in the, talk about the uh, the uh, the ham radio capability well, and our uh, monthly radio check. Uh, here in the park, uh, also because of the money that was generated through the programs to uh, recycle in particular, we actually have a ham radio station set up in a trailer up in the storage area. And we've got three people who have become qualified for radios uh, who in an emergency situation could man those radios. Those radios are also uh, maintained by battery power from solar system that's mounted on top of the trailer. And there are other supplies that are in that trailer too. So in a real emergency, we will have connection to the outside world through the ham radio station. That's really crucial uh, when you have somebody that's wanting to know how their family member is doing uh, and can reach
reach out and make communications to those folks. That's great to know. And then, of course, at the first uh, Tuesday of every month, we all get together and we test the equipment. We do a radio check. Uh, yeah, it's, that's one of the things that's been in place for quite a while. Uh, all the people that are considered to be captains, radio operators, and the auxiliary people and medical people uh, have radios in the uh, first Tuesday of every month, during the winter months anyway. Uh, we do a radio check so that everybody can stay familiar with the radios. And if we have any new people, that's a good way for them to experience what it's like to communicate uh, in case of an emergency. And that's what the radio system is all about, is in an emergency situation, that's how we coordinate with all of our captains and whoever becomes the, the, the location command yeah. in the case of an emergency. And we have uh, nine now, ten areas around the park. We're divided up in, and we have an area captain, or one or two area captains for each uh, section. Y yes, and the, we basically right now on our roster we have over 20 uh, team captains and assistants that in the case of an emergency, they're all assigned a particular zone and their job is to go out and evaluate uh, any, any problems within the park related to whatever the emergency would be, like yeah. an earthquake, if there's buildings that are, uh, houses that have collapsed or something, we then report that back to the area, to the, the main command and then we figure out what to deal, do with that. It's kind of a triage process where we go and evaluate what the first are going to do with that person and yeah. report all that in. All 10 areas, uh, the, those area captains have been trained how to do that. And in fact, usually every year we do a kind of a simulated drill uh, where everybody goes around their areas and, and does a, kind of the same thing they would do in a real emergency. I think it's important for us to point out that because of our ham radio capability and because we're so well organized that once first responders can reach us in case of, a, of an emergency, they'll know that they are going to be able to hit the ground running because our CERT program is so well organized and that's, that's a great advantage for us. Um, I just want to add that this entire organization of around 70 volunteers I think we have is 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 run by volunteers we urge you to get involved you can see that we are well organized we're effective but we also have a lot of fun this is a great way to uh, serve your community but also get to know your neighbors and if you can sign on to be a volunteer or join our recycling crew you'll find those links on this website thank you everybody get in touch if you have any questions absolutely thank bye bye you.